deep the dew water falls. No one comes close to me. Where are you, Whippoorwill? Screaming the night away with his great wing feathers, swooping the darkness up, I hear the eagle bird pulling the blanket back off from the eastern sky. school or anything like that. It was all taught out of it. At first, I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't need anyone to tell me. I, I could see it when something was wrong. The whole thing, as far as I'm concerned, is a design. The whole thing is a design. And then next comes the workmanship. Well, there's the extent of my uh, design work, eh? I just put the circular on there with a red pencil. And that's it. Now, the next operation, then I'll decide what I'm going to put on his back. are a little bit too far in the center. Right? See, uh, you've got to come alive. You've got to have movement in it. There's only one way that he'll look right. You've got to see it. When, when I first started carving, uh, I was carving on stainless steel and making rings and jewelry and such. And I was really looking for some other medium that was a little, a little easier to work with. And someone suggested that I should uh, maybe try uh, bone carving. They brought me a few pieces of uh, antlers. I started working with them, and I liked it. Carving is old Indian tradition, not only bone carving, but wood carving. Uh, they didn't make sculptures, large sculptures, but mostly tools, and hair combs, jewelry items, and so forth. The carvings that I uh, started on, and then somehow they just don't want to come out. When I get in a position like that, I just put the carving down and have a cigarette. Sometimes I don't look at them for months. But I know, like this one here, one day her waiting will be over. Uh, one day she'll be free. So I put them aside, uh, go and relax for a bit. didn't know what side to take. A lot of them sided with the British. And after the war, Washington was so pissed off with the Iroquois that that's when he set his armies against them to burn the cornfields. My feelings are, are real deep about the whole thing. Destroying a culture, one of the most beautiful cultures on this earth, which is lost forever. That's why I did that carving. Burning of the cornfields.
is the, uh, the final operation, except for painting the eyes. Before we can do this here, we have to, it has to be steel wooled and perfectly smooth because this buffing don't take away any uh, scratches. If there's any scratches in there, they'll stay in there. Gotta keep moving it around, otherwise uh, the buffing wheel turns so fast that it'll It'll burn, leave a brown mark, and then I gotta take it in there and sand it over. In deciding what to carve from an antler, I have to visualize it as a complete carving. I have to visualize it uh, as something that is alive. So in order to get everything out of the antler, in my mind, everything has to be just right. I, I don't know whether all artists feel that way, but that's my feeling. So there is a really a fine line, you know, between uh, what, what's good and what's not good. And the people recognize that. Uh, it kind of amazes me because I always thought that people I'm dealing with know so little about artwork. But I'd be damned if the whole thing I put together, I don't buy it, and that's it. <laughs> we, we've had this couple of pieces in about six different cities and 10 different prices, and still bring it back. There's nothing I could say that would make you understand, you know, my feelings, the feelings of an Indian. That's why sometimes, I guess, uh, the artist tries to get his feelings into his work, hoping that uh, the white man can understand it. When I look around me uh, in my travels throughout both Canada and the United States, you see all kind of artists, and many of them are really, really good. But without the knowledge of how to market their work, we feel that they uh, just cannot afford to uh, keep doing it. One thing to be an artist, but another thing to make a living it. <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to be taking a break now. Huh? <laughs> I like my version of the Iroquois Creole piece. Yeah, it's nice. It's not a pine cone, either. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of the, that lady that come up to our table with her little boy, and, and he asked what Russ's carving was. And uh, she says, oh, that's a chicken with a monkey on its back. <laughs> False face with an eagle on the back. And I says, well, that's no chicken or no monkey. I said, why would we carve something like that? One woman come up to me, and I thought she was making fun of our, our culture. She said, you, you don't really believe all those things, do you? I said, sure I do. I said, uh, how would you like it if I made fun of your culture? If you showed me a picture of, of Jesus carrying a cross, and I'd say, what's that man doing? Is that a white man gathering firewood? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess you got to expect that. When I was a kid, like all the uh, Englishmen at the time, went to church every Sunday. We were taught about the Bible. We never learned our own language or, or customs for fear of being laughed at. But as I grew older, I realized uh, how much we've lost. 
For 33 years, I, I worked in the construction business. There in the sky uh, with the high steel, it's a dangerous job. Very hard work. I was good at it. But there's more to a man than making a living. I've always told my sons, you don't have to be an old man to die. Death comes at any time. Of all my sons, Jimmy was the one most like myself. He loved the outdoors. He had a real sense for it. He liked to hunt. I think he would have made an excellent ranger. He was studying many things, engineering, architecture, photography. He was just beginning to feel his way around for a life that might suit him. I guess time has its own plans for each of us. I have killed the deer. I have crushed the grasshopper and the plants he feeds upon. I have cut through the heart of trees growing old and straight. I have taken fish from the water and birds from the sky. In my time, I have needed death so that my life can be. When I die, I must give life to what has nourished me. The earth receives my body and gives it to the plants and to the caterpillars, to the birds and to the coyotes, each in its own time, so that the circle of life is never broken. One of the things that I've learned from losing Jim is that there must be more to this life than competing. There's got to be something else. I'm trying very hard to find it. I think I'm on the right track. The truth is, with those millions of people in the world, worrying, arguing, rushing around, in the end, it doesn't mean a thing. You know, it doesn't matter what a man does, whether he's a doctor or a carpenter, whether he studied law or owns a jet plane. The only thing that is important is what a man feels, what he believes in, what a man thinks. <laughs>